Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon. Good evening. Depending on where you are, this learning hour um, may be adding to your day at different points of time. Welcome, everyone. Uh, we have an exciting program today. And um, in order to uh, be efficient in our time, we are going to start and um, welcome our teams uh, from ICRG and Cooperative University of Kenya um, to present on this important topic of women's financial inclusion. I want to invite um, everyone to please uh, put your questions and comments in the chat box uh, along the presentation so that either they can be addressed and responded to immediately after the presentations during our question and answer period, or else they can be answered later in our communication following the workshop. Either way, we are welcoming all the comments, all the questions, and we will try to address them all and respond to them. So without further ado, um, let's look very briefly at our agenda. Uh, this is going to uh, include um, uh, Judith uh, Hermanson, the director of, of ICRG, um, to tell a little bit about how this project came about and set the general stage. Then we have presentations of the colleagues from the University of Kenya, Cooperative University of Kenya, and the question and answer period. So without much ado, um, Judith, we would like to please ask you to start our meeting. Thank you very, very much, Barbara, and um, welcome to everybody. I'm so pleased to have you here so that we can share with you our our colleagues from the Cooperative University of Kenya that, and ourselves, the uh, outcomes of a very interesting collaborative research activity that we have uh, that we have recently completed. CUK and ICRG have been long-standing partners and undertaken numerous activities together. And this is this is uh, one of the most recent. The findings of this thought-provoking study, as I think you will hear as you um, as, as you listen to the presentations, are nuanced and they are also uh, they also have many different directions in which they point. We probably won't be able to do full justice to the richness of the findings, but we hope that uh, it will inspire you to also uh, engage with us and and to uh, and to read further once this study is published. So to begin, I'd just like to take a few moments to set the stage, as it says here, uh, and situate this research within a larger framework. The ICRG itself has a distinctive approach to research. We combine rigor and engagement with stakeholders and with an intentional linking of outcomes of the research to application. That means to policy, it means to programming, it means to inform operations. So those are very intentional uh, outcomes for us, and you'll hear some reson resonance of that in the remarks that, that are made today. This study itself grew out of a national study which we conducted, what difference do cooperatives make in Kenya? And there we found that members of cooperatives are better off financially and uh, have greater overall well-being, measurably so, than those who do not belong to cooperatives. This was a really very powerful finding. Uh, and it was true for men and it was true for women. However, we also found that women are disproportionately underrepresented within formal cooperative membership. And that led us to question why. And uh, we also know that women's, women in Kenya belong to, in high numbers, to informal cooperatives called chamas. So that was the, the thinking about that and as in dialogue with our, with our, our among ourselves. Uh, we, we thought that it would be very instructional 
to uh, understand more deeply the differences and the aspirations of the members and how women can benefit from the cooperative advantage even more than they are now without putting at risk the benefits that they already receive from their informal cooperative membership. So we asked the question about is formalization of informal cooperatives or fewer barriers to membership in formal cooperatives, would this enhance women's economic and other well-being? Uh, and this is a very thought-provoking and important question to consider. And in this study, we will share with you today what was the part of the study that was focused on economic and social, on economic benefits, although the study itself also considered the social bonds and the social benefits of membership. And we hope to have a separate session that will be focused on that. We couldn't do justice to both in this short time. So we will focus mostly on the economic aspects today uh, because of the time constraints. We will jointly publish this report, as I alluded to earlier, uh, the study and make it widely available. So anyone yeah, here who yeah, would like to see yeah. that, we can we can uh, make that available to you in in a short in relatively short order. Our goal is by the end of the calendar year. But in the meantime, we wanted to share with you the outcomes. That's the the presentation today. So with its rich implications, it provides many new perspectives on women's financial inclusion. So I think I've set the stage now. I hope so, and I would like now to uh, uh, turn it over to uh, my colleague, Professor Isaac Niamonga. Yeah, uh, thank you, Judith, for that introduction. Um, uh, allow me just to say greetings, uh, since we are in different time zones. Uh, um, uh, some of us may be uh, starting their day right now, as we, uh, those of us in this part of the country or the continent, uh, as we go through the final hours of the day. Uh, what I'm going to do is to make a presentation, um, which is a part of a, a four-part presentation in which I will start, and then I'll land over to my uh, colleagues, uh, Victor Wambua, who will uh, uh, tell us uh, about how we went about uh, the study. Then I'll have uh, Silas Mayo take over, who will uh, then also talk about the findings and then I will have uh, 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 my colleague uh, Lydia to talk about uh, the uh, policy implications. From the uh, financial access survey report of 2021 and the uh, uh, financial sector deepening uh, report of 2022, uh, the key findings that uh, we get out of uh, um, uh, that report is that there is an increase uh, in access to uh, finances, uh, formal finances, and this is largely driven by ICT use. Um, but also over that period, we have seen a reduction in uh, access to informal uh, sources uh, that it declined uh, from 4.7% in 2021. Um, uh, that declined to 4.7% in 2021 uh, right from uh, 6.1 in 2019 and 32.1% uh, uh, in 2026. And also the two reports do show that there is a reduction in disparities uh, in terms of uh, when you compare um, uh, men and women, and we see uh, a narrowing of the, you know, the gap. Uh, in 2016, it was 8.5. In 2021, it was uh, 4.2. Uh, are becoming to uh, the uh, point of uh, where you have uh, more access uh, uh, for those above 20, uh, 55 years uh, at, on, at, the, uh, at the later point. But overall, we see that despite the growth in the uptake of uh, financial inclusion, the gap between men and women uh, uh, improved to 4.2%. Uh, from 5.2% in 2019, implying that there is a, a rise in equality among uh, the two genders. Uh, move on to the next slide. 
um, so those are the differences between the informal and formal uh, uh, channels. And uh, Victor will be elaborating on this. Uh, but under the informal sources, um, there is no specific legislation. Uh, whereas under the formal uh, sources of finance, we have uh, uh, specific uh, acts of parliament that govern uh, the sector. So we have relevant acts, uh, and under the formal sources, we have, uh, for example, banks, uh, the uh, financial cooperatives, we have uh, microfinance institutions, insurance companies, while under the informal sources of funding, we have uh, uh, JAMAs, or what we call the informal uh, uh, groups, as well as the merry-go-rounds and uh, the roskers. Move on to the next slide. So we see that there is a, um, a reduction in the disparities between uh, men and women over the years. But um, when you look at the actual gender differences, we find that uh, women are more disadvantaged compared to, uh, uh, to, to men. Uh, the growth in the financial access has been largely driven by access to digital payment platforms, uh, likely the M-Pesa, which is uh, 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 found in all parts of the, uh, of the country. Uh, moving on to uh, next slide. Uh, that slide shows that uh, uh, we, the access to informal sources uh, of, 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 uh, of, of funds uh, is highest among those aged between 18 and 25, and those above 55 years, uh, perhaps uh, as a, a result of uh, many of them being out of employment uh, between 18 and 25, so they are relying more on formal sources. And those above 55, quite a number of them are uh, into uh, retirement. Uh, in our next slide, you look at the financial sector deepening report of 2022. Uh, we see that more women at 12.4% are financially excluded compared to men at 10.8%, but also that more women uh, are aligned to informal only sources of income compared to, uh, to men. In other words, we have more women uh, relying on informal uh, sources of, of, uh, uh, of finance. Uh, in the next slide, uh, this is going to be my, my last slide, uh, we see that, uh, and I would like you to focus more on the two points that are circled in red, uh, which show that uh, uh, women, more women uh, rely on informal uh, groups as sources of finance compared to men. Uh, that is in 2019, as well as in 2021. So with this, uh, uh, moving on to the next slide, with this, uh, we uh, focused on uh, a study to look at uh, why more women are likely to be excluded from the formal uh, access to finance compared to men. And uh, I would like at this stage then to invite Victor Wamboa uh, to take it away and uh, go through the next set of slides. Uh, Victor. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Prof. I'll take you through the next uh, slide. Um, is on uh, what we are, I mean, what we are, what we are yet doing. Uh, at, uh, you're saying that in this presentation, we'll be explaining the difference between chamas and circles. Then Silas will take us through why women join either, uh, either structures, and then uh, Lydia will take us through policy implications. So on my part, uh, that is on the difference between chamas and circles. We are saying that uh, for the chamas, they are informally organized. And we are saying that they are based on personal relationships or shared interest or purpose. That is to say that, uh, again, they're not even subjected to government oversight. But when you go to the circles, you find that um, there are formal institutions which are established and they are regulated. We have the Circle Societies Act for 2008 and the regulations are for 2005. The second difference is that um, in the Chamas, they are, um, they are primarily engaged in group savings and investment where they are able to help uh, members be able to purchase um, property and even to be able to start up businesses. 
But when you go to circles, you find that uh, they are geared towards uh, financial services, including um, savings accounts for the members, giving loans to members, insurance and investment products. Uh, the third difference is that um, the chamas are have less formal risk management practices, and this usually enables the members to be, I mean, to oftenly be able to collectively be responsible for both individual and group obligations. But in those circles, we find that um, they implement advanced risk management strategies. This is all because they want to ensure that their members' money is protected or members' funds are protected. Uh, the fourth uh, difference is that uh, in the mass, they do not typically have direct access to formal financial markets. But when we go to circle, we find that uh, they can be able now to engage in financial market activities and investment, and this is on behalf of their members. The last difference between chamas and circles is that uh, in the chamas, they are generally, generally they are small in terms of membership size. But when you go to the circles, you find that they, in, in terms of the membership size, they have a large membership base. So those are the differences between uh, the chamas and the circles. So on the next slide, I'll hand it over to Silas, take us through why women join either structure. Thank you and welcome Silas. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Victor. Uh, I will carry on from where you have left and look at uh, why women join either structure. We are looking at the Chamas, uh, which are the informal groups uh, compared to the circles, which are the credit unions. First, I will look at the reasons why more women join these Chamas compared to circles. Uh, in this study, we established that women have responsibilities of contributing to the social economic well-being of their family or even at the household level. So that kind of a responsibility at that level about them to be more uh, involved in some form of a group that can be able to allow them to uh, mobilize resources. The second reason is uh, to support each other during social functions, uh, such as burials. We have weddings, the bridewear negotiations, or even during sickness. Um, they will also utilize uh, this in terms of acquiring household items just to improve their livelihood. So when you look at these social functions being key, uh, this compared to circles is not very much keenly looked at in that formal arrangement. Uh, the other thing is uh, the chamas uh, foster coexistence and cohesion among women at the village and even at the community level compared to circles. That to mean that uh, uh, there is a lot of um, um, cohesion what you call the social network and the bonds between uh, the women is first at, at high level compared to the circles at the grassroots level. Uh, Chamas have products and services that are pro women needs. So you'll find that women in the Chamas will find a way of uh, uh, establishing products and services that are actually looking into the needs or there are issues on daily basis, uh, which are customized to uh, the level in which, and also the activities that are engaged in at that particular level. And therefore, motivating a majority of them to join these informal groups compared to the circles. The loans are approved and dispersed the same day. Uh, so the loaning, uh, or issuing of uh, small loans uh, to the members is very fast and the process is short uh, and therefore making them uh, uh, be very close to engaging into the informal groups, uh, which are also chama. Next. The other thing that we established in the study is um, uh, looking at the chamas compared to the circles, we look at the perceived benefits of being in the chama 
than in a circle. So what we were looking at, what actually uh, brings these women together into a formal group uh, as a majority, the way it has already been uh, said. Uh, so we looked at this and realized that uh, the interest rates on the credits are, are less. We have already uh, mentioned that the process of approving the credit is on the same day and based on the need because they are very close to each other. So the interest rates are also lower compared to uh, the circles. They help women mobilize resources. You notice that women are involved in the, they are responsible at the household level in terms of mobilizing resources to help the family uh, move forward. And therefore, uh, these are a benefit that will allow them or uh, have them uh, mobilize resources. Uh, the social support that uh, women get in terms of uh, whenever they have personal challenges, they are more able to get this addressed at the group level compared to the circle. And therefore, this becomes a critical uh, component in terms of the benefits that comes to, to them. Improved voice, uh, confidence, and courage. Um, the the chamas provide a platform where women can be able to voice their issues and even gain confidence and courage at the community level and the household level and therefore this is a a plus to them to be able to join the groups uh, so that uh, whenever they have this uh, call they can be able to confidently uh, contribute they also showcase uh, leadership skills. Uh, in Chamas, they are also they also have leadership structures, uh, and uh, therefore, um, the women who have the leadership skills have an opportunity to be able to <laughs> and be able to get this leadership uh, improved. There is also improved well-being at the household level. Uh, ultimately, uh, with a more vibrant and cohesive uh, informal group, the well-being at the household level is improved. Yeah, so those are uh, the key benefits, among others, that we established in this study. Uh, move to the next. All right, there were also uh, barriers that were identified uh, uh, first by women in joining chamas or circles. So whereas we are looking at comparing between the chamas and the circles in terms of uh, what really make women, a majority of them join the chamas compared to the circles, uh, women reported that uh, they are so resource constraints because men control uh, key resources, uh, uh, which is normally required uh, during formation or even joining the chamas or even the circle. So you, th this uh, const uh, lack of resources or inadequate resources exposed to women hinder them from joining either uh, the chamas or circles uh therefore locking them uh, behind they also have to seek permission or consent from their partners and uh, uh, in most of the um, uh, social setup uh where we uh, carry out the study we noted that uh, their partners do not support their desire to join the chama and a few of them will not uh, uh, allow up to some level, and that was a hindrance. Refusal or lack of support from their partners also was linked to financial support needed, um, uh, initial fee for joining, or even a uh, monthly contribution to JAMA. Because of uh, uh, that lack of support, now that their spouses are more exposed to, or they control these resources, uh, uh, hindered women from joining uh, the chamas. Inadequate time 
to participate in the JAMA meetings because of uh, most of the time uh, the women are engaged in household, uh, critical household activities, uh, the chores. And because of much of the time being um, spent on uh, household activities, uh, this hindered uh, women from uh, participating actively in the chamas. Uh, and that was a key barrier as well. The lack of awareness uh, regarding circles was also reported as a factor contributing to women not joining uh, this uh, structure. Uh, because uh, uh, we when you look at the the the, the, the site the, what they cited, uh, they were not aware that uh, what these circles will support them uh, at that household level. Uh, next, yeah, another uh, interesting part uh, we looked at on this study was uh, uh, the structure. Uh, I know there are differences have been mentioned, but uh, we wanted to understand what are the characteristics of the structures of these uh, 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 organizations uh, between the circles and the chamas. The chamas, the membership recruitment is done at the village level, and there is no prof profession or yeah, professional requirement for you to be able to join um, a chama. You just have to be in the common interest or the common goal within that particular uh, uh, community level, you join uh, the chama. Whereas the membership at the circle level are not based on locality. It goes beyond a village uh, and is more structured on uh, professional activity. For chamas, they require small registration fee uh, that is uh, between five to 10 US dollars. And that can also be paid in installments. Um, this is far much higher uh, for you to register as a member or you for you to register even uh, a circle uh, in that other structure. So making women more biased to joining the chamas. The products and services are focused on the mid uh, members' needs. They are normally short term, like they want to buy household utensils, furniture. Um, they want to pay school fees, uh, food. So, so you realize that the, the product are focused on those short term activities and in which women are keenly involved. Whereas for the chamas, sorry, for the circles. The products focus on long-term investments, uh, which normally, uh, that's why you realize we have a majority men uh, in circles because of the long-term investments, which is their goal. The loan approval is instant. Uh, there are no guarantors at the Chamas because uh, naturally the members know each other and they guarantee each other at group level. So the process is instant. Whereas uh, for the circles, the credit approval takes long process. You require guarantors and sometimes collaterals for you to be able to acquire the loan or the credit. The other uh, uh, difference in terms of the structure is uh, HMR supports social functions as it has been alluded to, whereas uh, uh, circles do not support uh, mainly, it's not their main core activity to support the social functions that uh, their membership are engaged in. And therefore, with all these uh, characteristics, you realize that we have less youth in Chamas because they are still chasing their career. They are transient uh, from one place to another. They are not stat static to, uh, in a particular village or community level because of their careers and other uh, endeavors. Whereas the circles have more youth because a circle will accommodate a, an, a member wherever they are, as long as they have, uh, uh, they are within the common bond 
and they are willing to participate in the uh, savings at that particular level. Thank you. Next. Yeah, so I will ask uh, my colleague uh, uh, Lydia to come and uh, be able to look at the policy implication of this study. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Silas, and uh, thank you very much, everyone. So data from this study uh, show that uh, CHAMAS provide good environment through which members, majority of whom are women, uh, foster closer networks and facilitate their economic development. We also appreciate that um, there is consensus from the results that circles provide greater investment opportunities that could foster economic development of members, including women. However, there are barriers that block women from joining these circles. And we are saying that uh, these barriers need to be addressed at all levels, starting from the institutional level. We are saying that um, can these circles review the bylaws. From the previous presenter, you heard that the registration fee is higher in circles than in chamas. The joining procedures are also very stringent or uh, in circles than in chamas and the frequency of meetings. Women said that in, uh, in chamas, they even meet once a week or once a month. But in circles, you find that they meet, uh, members meet once in a year or, or probably twice. So we are recommending uh, the circles to review the bylaws so that uh, they can accommodate uh, women. We are also saying that um, circles need to develop products and services that attract more women to join them. Because again, from the findings, we, we saw that um, it takes time for credit to be approved in circles, that is what women said. And in chamas, it is just approved within a day. They also said that um, in circles, the, it is long term, the, the investments are long term, but in chamas, it is short term. So we are saying, can, can these institutions, the circles, develop products? that are attractive to women to join them. Next slide. At the county level, we, we, we realize that they are currently developing uh, policies. When we look at the national development policy, it is very well aligned and it supports our study. So we, we are recommending to the county uh, governments in Kenya to develop policies and laws that support gender inclusivity, and they should align this to the national government, to the, to the national cooperative development policy, because you realize that it, it, it supports gender, gender mainstreaming and women activities. Uh, it is also the role of the county government to provide information to pre-cooperative groups. So we are recommending that as they do this, let them let the, them do it in such a way that the members of these um, chamas understand the benefits of joining circles. Women say that some of the reasons they do not want to join the circles is because um, they don't want to be audited. Circles are audited, chamas are not audited. So we are we are recommending to the county governments to to educate them on these benefits. Of, of, of being audited, of submitting reports and so forth. Next slide. At the national level, we have the National Cooperative Development Policy 2020. And as I said earlier, it is very well aligned and it supports our study. So we will be recommending to the, to the national government to support the implementation of this policy so that each and every circle uh, is aware of, of, of part of, of, of part 2.11, that is on gender mainstreaming, and part two, that is on women activities. 
So if this is done, then, then women activities will be enhanced in uh, nationally. So next, thank you, thank you very much. Back to you, Barbara. Yes, thank you. Thank you, this was very interesting and rich presentation. Um, as uh, I open the floor, please, uh, for anyone who would like to either ask the question or comment on anything that was said, please raise your hand, um, jump in, or uh, please uh, put your put your comment um, or question into the chat so that um, we can answer them at any time. Um, is there, I'm looking at um, hands raised. Anyone from uh, uh, the audience, please don't be shy. Um, while you all um, gather your thoughts and, and please uh, put them in, in the chat or raise your hand. I have a, a, a question to start any, any of the colleagues. Oh, here is uh, uh, Professor Gishero, please go ahead. Go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Barbara. And uh, thank you team for a very good presentation of the research findings. Yeah, I think it is quite educative and uh, uh, represents the situation on the ground. Uh, there is one thing that I would like to be clarified. Uh, I don't know whether it was uh, Maya while he was talking, he said that uh, interest rates for chamas are lower than interest rates for cooperatives. And uh, I was thinking it is the other way around. So probably that can be elaborated uh, just to see whether, you know, what are the facts? Because I thought interest rates for chamas uh, in my own understanding are higher than the interest rates in cooperatives. Most of the cooperatives charge an interest rate of 1% per month on declining balance. And I thought that chamas uh, charge more, much more than that. So that was my, my concern. Thank you. Uh, uh, just another quick question. Um, I don't know whether you can be able to hear me. Yes, we are. Yeah, my name is uh, Naftali Tiang. Um, I want to thank a uh, cooperative university for the research, the, uh, the study. I think this research is good and um, it will really go ahead to helping our, our, our youth and uh, women. Uh, just a quick one. Um, to Mayo, there was there, there were a few questions that I wanted him maybe to elaborate maybe later. Um, as you are aware, there are banks right now that are also following Chamas, and um, there is a lot of work that banks such as Equity, Stanbic, and others that are doing with Chamas. Did this study also try to reach out to those? Uh, to those uh, groups that uh, uh, banks are working with just to find out the, um, the financial implication, um, how these banks are working with these chamas in enhancing their financial inclusion uh, aspects. Then the other one um, also goes to Mayo. He said that uh, youth um, are not participating uh, so much in chamas um, did the study try to look at uh, the age categories of these youth? Was this study done in the rural areas or was it done in the urban setting? Because our understanding of youth in the rural setting is that the youth are, are, part are participating a lot uh, in Chamas. And so um, if uh, this study, maybe it would be, would be good if it's clarified whether it was done in the urban setting or in a rural setting. Then lastly, so that I don't eat into a lot of uh, time, um, th there was the issue of flexibility, whether chamas and circles are um, a bit flexible. Um, mo our, our, most of our circles uh, uh, come up from uh, self-help groups, um, which uh, are very flexible, people knowing each other and they do their own bylaws. Um, does, a, does the study try to implicate that um, 
uh, circles, um, which type of circles were they looking at? Uh, because uh, the, most of the circles are also, uh, uh, are, um, um, their membership is actually out of people who know each other. So uh, there are products that the circles also have, which are very youth friendly and also women friendly. Um, I don't know why he's saying that maybe some of these um, restrictions are very stringent on, on circles vis-a-vis uh, -vis the chamas. Thank you very much. Thank you, Neta. Um, Silas, anyone, uh, maybe you can answer some of those questions together. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, uh, let me start. Uh, I know my colleagues will help me answer some of the questions. Let me start with the question raised by Professor Isheru about the interest rates for Chamas uh, in the study it has cited to be lower. Uh, I will begin by saying um, um, the Chamas in terms of how they are established, as we looked at, they look at the short term, uh, the short term uh, um, investment or short term credits, one month, two weeks, or a year, uh, or under that. So uh, when you look at the, the, the products, how they are organized, to support uh, their financial inclusion uh, compared to the circles. Uh, and then you realize that uh, the interest rates are actually lower uh, by the fact that the products are a short-term uh, products that are um, not identified to be in the circle sector. And again, uh, they also look at the uh, affordability of this particular product because they know each other as members when they are setting those conditions. But uh, to also uh, report on what uh, they mentioned is that um, um, the loans or the products they get in terms of the loan, they only have uh, two rollovers. So if you are able to pay within the first uh, period, if you are not able to pay it to roll to the next period, and then it is stopped, and uh, the interest will never accumulate uh, on that as you go beyond the second rollover. So, so that becomes uh, cheaper for them to afford as they cited. Uh, then the other questions from Naftali about uh, uh, whether the study checked out if the banks are following up with the chamas. Indeed, we looked at that um, and we noticed that the banks have done a very commendable job in facilitating trainings through the social service offices. We noted that uh, the circle, the, 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 whereas the, the, the circles are formal, and regulated or oversight by government, Chamas are not. So they are attached to a social protection officer who linked them to these particular opportunities. So the banks provide the training on uh, basic uh, financial literacy, uh, supporting them also the investment and also um, grow them so that they become uh, a big um, uh, functions or institutions that can also grow into mainstream uh, financial services. So indeed, we did that. And the, the, when we share the report, we'll be able to show all these other uh, financial institutions, how they support the groups. The other uh, one was about the age. Yeah. The age, um, yes, we have the data on age and uh, in, in terms of age category, and also uh, looking at the, uh, why we have fewer um, youth in that, in the study. I uh, will be able to share that in the interest of time, but uh, just to mention the study was carried out in three counties. That is uh, Kisi, Machakos, and uh, Nandi County. 
are looking at the the social economic activities and the and the activities that are or that are held with these organizations uh, just for comparison uh, purposes and we noted it is true that uh, we find in the rural uh, establishment the youth are 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 uh, fewer compared to the urban but, but that is what the data will also tell us in the report thank you thank you silas um i'm looking at the clock um oh. and in the interest of time i want to bring up one of the questions that has been asked in the chat uh, we will uh, definitely answer all the questions, both those asked um, in person and in chat in the, in the follow-up messages. But the question here uh, was posed to any of the presenters. As women's financial inclusion is imperative, what should be done to strengthen this inclusion and make it more effective for the future in different structures? Professor, would you like to... to uh... <laughs> to uh, answer that? Uh, yes, I'll make an attempt. Uh, I think that is a, a critical question uh, because uh, the data that we have from the uh, financial access surveys is uh, uh, that in which there is disparity between men and women. And definitely we require uh, efforts to uh, increase uh, women's inclusion uh, in uh, you know access to uh, uh, to finance, and I think one of the uh, challenges, uh, particularly when you go to uh, formal sources of funding, have to do with uh, particularly if you are looking for loans, have to do with uh, the type of uh, uh, collateral that is required, or you know to ensure that uh, you know um, you are uh, the, the money that is lent to you uh, is safe. And uh, banks will, will go for things like uh, title deeds for the land or, you know, uh, logbooks. And often you will find that uh, these are some of the resources that uh, men have greater control uh, uh, for various cultural reasons. Uh, you, you find that almost, uh, you know, uh, a very high percentage uh, way back in the, I mean, over, over, over the 90% of uh, titles will be in, in, in the names of just the, you know, the men. And therefore, when women go for loans, then they will not have some of those uh, uh, collateral that is required by the bank in order for them to be uh, given uh, financial uh, uh, support. So I think uh, perhaps that's an area in which uh, we'd want to uh, uh, to look at. I think uh, at some point one of my friends asked me, why would we want to have the women uh, meet all these requirements when we know that there are cultural barriers? Why wouldn't the banks uh, provide resources that take into consideration those cultural barriers that exist so that, uh, you know, women also have access to uh, to uh, to finance? Must it, must it be only a title deed or a logbook that has to be given, or can banks actually come up with the alternative uh, 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 I mean, uh, support systems that are able then to provide uh, financial support to uh, to women? I think this is a question that we need to uh, debate further, uh, just to find out what is it that uh, we need to adjust in order uh, for the banks then to be able to. Um, um, uh, provide resources uh, to uh, to women. We tend to think that women should be the ones to adjust in order to meet the, the requirements that are set by the bank. But perhaps also banks need to uh, do something, some effort on their part to be able to meet the women uh, pathway, uh, 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 you know, uh, midway. Uh, there is also another question that has been asked, I think it's by Patricia Carrier. Uh, on whether the study focused on other uh, cooperative models such as uh, worker cooperatives, and uh, you know the answer is that uh, well, this particular study just focused on uh, financial uh, cooperatives and uh, uh, and and chamas. Uh, so perhaps that is something else that uh, could be uh, taken up at uh, some other time. 
Uh, right. Maybe one, other, yeah. Maybe one other question that was asked. I think it was by Etienne. Uh, uh, this would be my uh, last comment. Um, I think um, Etienne has specifically asked whether um, uh, why banks are going for for Chamas, uh, you know, and they gave the example of equity and standing. Uh, I think if you look at, uh, you know, some of the government efforts, particularly uh, the Women Enterprise Fund, uh, that is targeting uh, sometimes groups uh, of women, and uh, uh, banks are basically positioning themselves in order to be able then to provide banking services once the women uh, get the money or, or the funds. But also trying to, because the women are coming into, into groups and collecting money, and uh, they, you know, they are encouraging them instead of uh, keeping that money with them, they are encouraging them to uh, bring that money into the bank. Uh, and obviously, the banks are looking at the bottom line, you know, or what 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 remains on their balance sheet. So they are encouraging women to actually take that that money uh, into uh, into the banks uh, and and you know, open bank accounts. And that's why some of the banks are actually targeting these groups to be able to expand their uh, customer base. Thank you. Thank you. That that was great. Um, I just want to assure everybody that our session is not the last one to speak about these important issues. I now um, would like to ask Selendi to just say a word about our plans for the future um, session. Selendi? Sure. Thank you, Barbara. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so very much for joining us today. Um, as Dr. Hermanson mentioned earlier, please anticipate a number of follow-up items from OCDC's research group. Um, these items will include the session recording, any responses um, to questions that we were not able to get to in today's session, in addition to details about our follow-up session that will dive into another very important aspect of this study, social network analysis. Um, also, please stay tuned for the release of the full report um, of this study to explore the findings in further detail. As always, we appreciate and recognize your attendance today, um, and we invite you uh, to connect with us um, and, and the Cooperative University of Kenya um, in our various platforms um, and also um, by email as well, which we have here on the screen. But for the final words, I will hand it over um, to Dr. Hermanson. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Salandi, and uh, thank you all, uh, really to the uh, colleagues from the Cooperative University of Kenya, did a masterful job uh, presenting some very um, complex material in a very, very excellent um, and understandable way. And um, and thank you to everybody who raised very interesting questions. I think you can you also have made us think about some things in, in some different ways. So really, we I feel enriched by having had this discussion. At the end, I think that, uh, or at the next step, shall we say, because we're not at the end, uh, this particular study, which uh, I should probably stress, we didn't, didn't want this to be an overly academic presentation, want to really get to where the findings are, but everything that we did present today is um, is underpinned by, by data. I think that was alluded to by some of my, my colleagues as well. So, um, we, we feel pretty confident about the, the outcomes. The question is then what, what do we do next? What, what happens next within, within Kenya? And that of course is a, will be a continuing, a continuing story. At the end of this session and at the end of this particular report, we could conclude that Chamas and Sacos provide financial access for different kinds of purposes, different loans, different, different serves, different, um, different, um, different goals uh, for, for, for women and, and for men. There are some men that are members of Chamas as well. Um, but I think that there are some very interesting implications about financial inclusion beyond that. And should women, as our, our research demonstrates that associate member, formal membership 
membership in a formal cooperative, excuse me, SACO, uh, is associated with higher uh, economic standards. And so uh, if there is a, an appetite for that, I think that the, the um, approaches that were suggested, and I'm sure that there may be others as well that some of you may, may even offer to us to look at the barriers and begin to break those down so that the financial inclusion is to all aspects of finance uh, meeting the demand of, of many, uh, many different stakeholders. So I think with that, I'm not gonna attempt to really summarize because it's too complicated, but there are many very interesting uh, aspects that we can pursue and I hope we can pursue together uh, in terms of making some uh, important steps towards women's financial inclusion through cooperatives. In, in Kenya. So thank you again for, for your attendance, for being here, for being such great participants. And we really look forward, as Salandi said, to engaging with you all further. And finally, thanks again to our wonderful partners at the Cooperative University of Kenya. I would really, really appreciate and it's an honor to be able to work with you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for attendance and please join us at the next meeting and we will send uh, announcements ahead of time and um, hopefully the time zones and the time differences are not going to come in the way. Thank you everyone, have a good evening, good morning, good rest of the day, wherever you are. Bye.